Shalom, my friends. This is Max Joseph, and I am here because it is finally the first day of January, which means two things. First and most important, Happy New Year. It's 2021. We made it. And second, it is time for the predictions. To give a quick rundown, the predictions will be a video that will be released on the first of every month and will feature my predictions for the upcoming Academy Awards. Each category will feature the maximum number of nominees possible with an additional few that are the next in line. And I'm just going to stick with the format that I've been doing for the last year. So for now, I'll continue to add the additional few nominees that'll be titled followed by. And I'm officially going to get rid of the big snub that should make it, but I may eventually add what my vote would go to, and maybe I'll add it in the future, I don't know. And I won't always get into detail about every single pick, because then the video would be nine hours long, so I'll always talk about my pick to win, and then some other highlights on the list as well. And my friends, I can't believe it. The Oscars are now only 114 days away. That's right, the Oscars are happening on April 25th, 2021, not February 28th, which would only be 58 days away by the way. That is insane. Anyway, December was basically the best year for movie releases this entire year, which has lasted for about 18 years. We got Mank, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Soul, Sound of Metal, The Prom, Minari, Promising Young Woman, News of the World, Wonder Woman 1984, The Midnight Sky. So many things came out in December, and for once, the world felt normal. Although, it would have been really nice to see some of these films in the movie theater. So we have a lot to discuss in this video and a lot of new winners as well. But before I go into my predictions, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel and ding that little bell to get notified whenever I post new videos. And I said it all last year and I'm gonna ask you once again, if you are in Georgia, please make sure you vote. Control of the United States Senate is up for grabs. So if you are registered to vote in Georgia, please vote. Get more info at www.georgia.gov slash vote dash 2020 dash runoff dash elections. And so here are my predictions for the 2021 Oscars, January edition. Best picture. We have a new winner. That's right, my friends. I am switching my winner to Nomadland. And I have a gazillion reasons why. One of them being, I think that Nomadland is just a better film by a lot. Another, I'm just gonna start putting this into existence. And then another reason is that Nomadland has pretty much dominated every critic's choice so far. Now, do critics' choices foreshadow the Oscars? No, not necessarily, but they don't mean nothing. And Nomadland has pretty much either won best film or been nominated at every single critic's choice. The last reason is that as much as I respect Mank, and I might make a separate video about this, but, I appreciate Mank. I don't know if we should be awarding a film about the glory days of old Hollywood, which was all about white men. Like in a year filled with so much diversity, there are honestly way better options in my opinion. There is no reason that we need Mank to win Best Picture. Will it be deserving if it wins? Sure. But I think there's more deserving films out there and better films. Also, speaking of winners of Critics' Choice, First Cow. This one is going to be one of the most fascinating films to follow this season. In the existence of the New York Film Critics Circle, they have never had their best film winner not be nominated for at least one Oscar. Most have actually ended up even getting a nomination and win for picture, but that might change this year. I think First Cow may have trouble getting a single nomination. It also won Best Film for Florida Film Critics Circle. Also, I'll not be surprised to see Chicago 7 pull this thing off. Besides being one of the best movies of the year, it's obviously very political and socially relevant, and I think it could make quite the statement if this ended up winning the whole thing. Promising Young Woman is also going to be an interesting one to look at. People love this movie, and Focus is going to campaign the sweet baby Moses out of it. Kind of feeling like the little engine that could, so be prepared and ready for that. And P.S. I'd be all about it. Last, look out for two big movies. First, Judas and the Black Messiah. It is being released on February 12th, 2021, and I will not be surprised if we see this thing blow up. The second is The United States versus Billie Holiday, which just got picked up by Hulu. So both of these could potentially do some serious damage. Best director. We have a new winner. So here's the thing. When you literally sweep 
Seven out of seven awards, you have to be considered the frontrunner. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. And guess what? I'm thrilled. And after giving Nomadland a couple watches, I'm feeling even more confident making this switch. Winning this award would be one of the most historic wins in the history of the Academy Awards. Zhao would be the first Asian woman to win this award, and only the second woman to ever win this award, the first being Catherine Bigelow a decade ago. Also, if both Chloe Zhao and Regina King get nominated, this would be the first time ever, ever, that two women were nominated for Best Director in the same year. Insane. Now, I don't think that David Fincher is out of the running. Like I've said and will continue to say, critics don't always align with what the Academy goes for. But this, this category is really starting to feel pretty clear. So as of now, nobody is stopping Chloe Zhao. Actress in a leading role. First, Sydney Flanagan should be winning this award. She should be winning every single possible award that is being thought of. To be fair, I haven't seen Promising Young Woman yet, and I think that's the only option where I'd change my mind. But right now, as of January 21st, 2021, wow, that's crazy, Sydney Flanagan should sweep everything. Not gonna happen, but I just had to say it. Remember how I said I'd maybe throw in, like, the big snub that should make it? Maybe that's kind of like what that is. Okay, this is the most exciting acting category for me. This is stacked. Also, there's not really a clear frontrunner yet. Our three biggest winners so far are Carrie Mulligan, Frances McDormand, and Sidney Flanagan. Viola Davis has actually not won anything yet, but again, it's still early. I think that she'll start to pick up momentum. So this could actually go any way. Actor in a leading role. As far as the winner, there's not really a wrong pick yet. We are spoiled with the talent in this lineup, but I still think that this is a race between Boseman and Hopkins. Both gave, and I'm not exaggerating, legendary performances that will be remembered forever, and both are deserving of this award. But I do think that Boseman has the edge. If we were living in a world where Hopkins had never won an Oscar, it would go to him. But that's not the world we live in. I also just have to campaign for Kingsley ben -Adir. All the gents in One Night in Miami are being campaigned in the same category. And no matter where this man goes, I just want to say how un freaking believable he is as Malcolm X, and he needs to get some love. Actress in a supporting role. We have a new winner! This category is so up in the air, and at this point, I, I, I really don't think there's a front runner. I don't really think anyone is even guaranteed a nomination. But after watching Mank, I'm not sure that the Academy is gonna go crazy over Amanda Seyfried. I'm gonna go with the veteran, the Oscar winner, Ellen Burstyn. She's brilliant! And pieces of a woman, and I think it's something everyone will be able to get behind. Also, I'm not happy or confident about taking Saoirse Ronan out of my five, but I really, really want Maria to get in, and I think she should get in. Also, she has won so much so far, which is both shocking and really awesome. There's no doubt in my mind that her performance is I iconic, so to have her doing so well so far is really exciting. And I'm still not positive that she'll be able to convince the Academy to go for it, but my goodness, they better. Because she is a comedic genius. Let's have some comedy in this lineup. Also, she's going lead for the Globes, so either her or Meryl are about to win a Globe. And if Maria does it, she'll win that award on her first try. And if you win the Globe in this category, your chances go up significantly for that to translate in an Oscar nomination. Actor in a supporting role. You're probably going, whoa, what's going on? Why is he all blurry? Well, because I recorded this a couple days early due to the new year, the news about Daniel Kaluuya officially going supporting and the Keith Stanfield going lead didn't come out until Wednesday afternoon. So instead of giving you what my predictions were before that, I thought I'd just do this fun little voiceover to say that my predictions have obviously changed. So. Because Kaluuya is going supporting, I think he is now the frontrunner. His biggest competition depends on how the One Night in Miami gents get campaigned, because if Kingsley ben -Adir and Leslie Odom Jr. are here, his competition is really tough. If not, it feels like this is Kaluuya's, assuming Judas and the Black Messiah is as good as we hope it's going to be. Oh, I can add this last part that I actually recorded. Yay! I've also thought about the possibility that they'll give Chadwick a win here and let Hopkins take lead. While that's possible, I think they just have to do a lot of convincing. Not impossible, but just doesn't feel likely at the moment. Original screenplay. I could truly see any of the 10 getting a nomination, but I do think Sorkin's Chicago 7 is the one to beat. Nobody does a core drama like Aaron Sorkin. He's the master. 
And again, political year, it's gonna make an awesome statement if this ends up winning. And while I would love for Never Rarely Sometimes Always or Soul to dominate, I don't think it's gonna happen. And let me just say, taking Soul out of this lineup was the most upsetting decision I've had to make this entire season. I really hope it gets in. Adapted screenplay. Still sticking with Nomadland, and if this happens, this is gonna start feeling awfully similar to last year, don't you think? Bong Joon-ho's Parasite won original screenplay, then it won director, and then it won picture, which also gave Bong three Oscars right there. If Nomadland wins these three, that gives Chloe Zhao three Oscars, because she wrote the screenplay, she directed, and she produced Nomadland. Could we see a repeat? It's possible. But she does have competition. In my opinion, Ma Rainey, The Father, and One Night in Miami have three of the best screenplays for this entire season, not just in Adapted. So although Nomadland may be the frontrunner, this one is a very lively category. Animated feature. I get that Wolf Walkers could be argued as the one to beat right now because it has the most wins so far, but I just don't think it's gonna beat Soul. As we learned from just last year, when Toy Story 4 won this category, we know the Academy loves Pixar. And again, when Pixar is nominated for an original movie, aka not a sequel, it has only lost twice. It's 8 out of 10 for original films, and Soul is original, and in my opinion, it is one of Pixar's boldest and most powerful entries they've ever had. Cinematography. So, after seeing both Mank and Nomadland, Nomadland should probably be winning this. While Mank is impressive, Joshua James Richards' photography in Nomadland is exceptional. Would it be fun for Eric Messerschmidt to make history by becoming the first cinematographer to earn a win on their first try? Yeah, it'd be really exciting. But Nomadland should win this in a landslide. No disrespect to Mank, it's gorgeous, but Nomadland is on another planet. All that being said, I think that Ampas will be more hot on Mank. Production design. Nostalgia? Nostalgia. It's just a thing. One of my favorite parts of Mank was the production design. Donald Grambert absolutely crushed it. Similar to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he did a wonderful job getting the glory days of that old Hollywood feel. So I think that Oscar voters will be eager to vote for this unless they love the gorgeous theatrical set of Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. But assuming they don't, Oscar number two should be coming for Burt. Not a guaranteed win, but I do think he is the smart choice right now. Costume design. Mank is probably winning this. The costumes are lovely, but have you seen the costumes for Jingle Jangle? How is this not the front runner? How are people not talking about this? These costumes are literally breathtaking. I am angry about it. Anyway, six of the last 10 winners of this award have been Best Picture options, and I think it'll continue this year. Assuming this is the case, it'll make four years in a row where a Best Picture nominee gets this win, which is fine. The costumes are great. Film editing. Nomadland and Mank are great, but the editing in Chicago 7 is absurd. Part of the reason the film is so good is because of the editing. With Sorkin's fast-paced dialogue, the film kind of depends on the editing to keep up with it. Right now, I think Alan Baumgarten will most likely get this win pretty easily, and earn his second nomination and first win, after last being nominated for American Hustle in 2014. And like I will always say, since 1934, less than 15 times has a film won Best Picture without at least a nomination in this category. So for everyone who is thinking about an upset in Best Picture, it may be wise to make sure you have that film in this category. Makeup and hairstyling. First, now is the time to remind us that, thank goodness, they made this category five. There was no reason that it was anything other than that. Second, I just love this category this year. Seven of the last 10 winners here were in the Best Picture lineup, and I think, again, that trend will continue. Give it to Ma Rainey. That team did unbelievable work on this cast. They helped build the world of the film. And even though it may not be as showy as something like Hillbilly Elegy, I, it's just as effective, at least for me, even more effective. Sound. Just, just sound. I will be elated with any of the top three winning this award, but I'm not quite there for Soul because only one animated film has won a sound award ever, and that was The Incredibles in 2005 when they won sound editing. So 
Pixar has done it before, but it hasn't been done in over 15 years. But I do think the sound in Soul was, like, really special. Also, Nolan films have either won or been nominated eight times in the past, so even though it has competition, I'm not gonna switch it up until we get something from CAS and other major precursors. Visual effects. So five months ago, I said it's Dune versus Eternals versus Tenet. Four months ago, I said it's Dune versus Eternals. Three months ago, I said it's Dune versus everyone else. Two months ago, I said it was Tenet versus Midnight Sky. Last month, I said again, Tenet versus Midnight Sky. And this month, again, Tenet versus Midnight Sky. I think that we're officially set with these two. Unless something crazy happens. There's just been so many delays of the major blockbusters, so our options, they're not limited, but they're just like a little bit different than we're used to. But I do think Tenet will take it, and will earn a third visual effects Oscar for a Nolan film this last decade. Original score. Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross are gonna win no matter what, I think. They have the two front runners, and I think that they deserve this Oscar anyway. For me, Soul is far and away the best score of the year. And if it happens, ninth time in history, an animated film will win this award. And Pixar's second time winning. The first was Up in 2010. Original song. I know the smart move is to finally give Diane Warren her first Oscar after being nominated 11 times, 12 if she gets this nomination, but I think that this is gonna go to Leslie Odom Jr. The song is powerful, the song is relevant, Leslie sounds ridiculous, and it has something to say. But if Warren wins this, that will make a lot of sense. And it will also be a really awesome moment during the ceremony. International feature film. I'm still shaking my head about why Italy didn't submit The Life Ahead, but I guess that's neither here nor there. This year in this category, it's not like the last two years where we all knew what was gonna win. Two years ago, Roma. Then last year, of course, Parasite. This year, there really isn't a clear frontrunner, which is awesome. It's fun when there's not a clear frontrunner and things can maybe go one way at one ceremony and then a completely different way at another. But another round seems to have the momentum, and by the way, this isn't the first time Thomas Vinterberg and Mads Mikkelsen have worked together. They teamed up on The Hunt, which was nominated in this category in 2014. Actually, the category was called Foreign Language Film, but that has obviously changed since. Also, if another round wins, it will be Denmark's fourth win. Documentary feature. How would the documentary about COVID-19 and the failure of our current administration not win this? It checks every box it needs. The reason I don't have Dick Johnson is dead as the frontrunner is because I think it's very possible it doesn't even get nominated. For some reason, the Oscars haven't gone for the early frontrunners the last couple years, those being Apollo 11 and Won't You Be My Neighbor. So if Dick Johnson manages to get the nomination, I think that's when I'll consider moving it up. Those are my predictions for the 93rd Academy Awards January edition. Let me know what you have predicted in the comments. Agree? Disagree? Let me know. And so my friends, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like this video. Give me your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe to this channel as well as follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd at mjoseph 92 Like my page on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Person. Join the Amino live chat, which is open 24-7, 365. And if you really love me, please consider being a member of the channel where you can get member-only content, guest interviews, giveaways, and lots more. You can even give me a film to review, a 10th of the month top 10 category, a ranking, or a song to sing, and that video will be dedicated to you. Shalom, my friends.